Good morning, everyone. We have a lot going on today. We have the rain barrels and the IBC tote delivered coming up right now here on the Epic Homestead. Ooh, there we go. There's that tote. And here she is. Look at this beautiful, beautiful beast. Black Prevent Algae, 275 gallons. Welcome to the void. All right, we have our IBC back here. Obviously, <laughs> a little bit of a gap to connect here, but I do have some extra downspout right there, so I'll probably use that. Let me show you the setup here. We've got the shed one. This is a little low, so I'm gonna use some tin snips and cut this up, get an elbow to get into here. Over here, we've got, this one's not gonna pull a bunch of water, but there is drainage off of that, and so what we'll need to do is Again, throw an elbow and a little bit of extra down into there. And then finally, Jock's doing some artichoke action. We've got the uh, front terracotta is gonna be coming again right into here. Transferring in water from the trash can into the IBC. Whoop! Reminds me of that tornado experiment. Filled up most of the IBC tote, but now we're turning our attention to the garlic patch, which has been needing to get planted for a while. So we picked up some mushroom compost, which is not what it sounds like. Most people think, oh, it's just a bunch of mushrooms composted. No, it's wood shavings. There's actually probably little bits of mushrooms you can see right here. Uh, it's just the substrate, the leftover substrate. Jock is, is pulling it up right there. Yeah, you can see it. So it's it's pretty, I would say it's pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah, it looks good. It could be, organic it could probably matter. be, yeah, it's organic matter. It could probably be a little more broken down, but that's fine because we're just going to top dress on the garlic bed. But the first step is to actually reveal what's underneath. Here we go. Let's see what we got. I'll pull some off. Maybe hopefully nothing. Yeah, let's, I mean, we're hoping nothing. <laughs> a lot of good rains lately. Yeah, look at that. Got some sprouts. These are all the weed seeds. They're yep. all sprouting. Yep. So they're clearly not going to make it. Yeah, we're going to let those <laughs> roast. I mean, these are stretching for the light. Look at how small these little devils start out as. Yeah, I mean, w those are just a smother and smother and top dressing. They'll, they'll go away. You could, I guess, hit it with like a flame weeder, but no real need on, on these. All right, rest of the paper's off. Let's see. Let's see the magic. That's why you keep the cardboard graveyard, so you can do stuff like this. <laughs> Let's pull this off. Oh yeah, this looks good, man. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> not much, actually. That's not much at all. All right, Whatever even a little bit of a, bad, maybe? that's definitely Bermuda. So we might want to try to dig that up. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna dig that up. But these, honestly, look, easy. you got the root, so that's fine. So we'll take the rest of the Bermuda out. So I just took the broad fork through, didn't actually overturn it like we did with this bed. Uh, just wanted to loosen it up a little bit more. It'll accept some more water. We're gonna take the compost and top dress this whole thing after we smooth it out. Bed is now nice and smooth, thanks to the Corona bow rake, and Jacques is about to do the big dump. Here we go. Let's go. It'd be impossible without the double wheelbarrow. I'm telling you, the double wheelbarrow is number one in this garden. It is such a clutch thing. Here, let me help you really get some of that out. Yeah, let me though. get some out. Good stuff right here. Oh, it's all over my shoe. There we go. Now it's just spreading this out, wetting it down, and Pretty soon we'll put the garlic in. All righty, just wetting this down, making sure it soaks up a lot. This is an extra maybe two or three inches on top for the garlic, which is gonna give us a little extra cover, especially in a hot climate, because I'm growing a lot of hardneck garlic, so we're probably gonna want cooler soil temperatures for a decent amount of time. And that's what this is for. All right, it's blueberry time now. These need to get in the ground. They're gonna go in these pots, actually, not in the ground. So the recipe, 60% of azalea camellia mix, AKA an acid mix. Then you've got some micro bark, about 10%. And then the remaining 30% is going to be just a solid potting mix like this one right here. We're gonna mix it over in that birdie's bed. So we've got three bags of the azalea camellia mix. That's all going in, that's 4.5 cubic feet. We've got about two cubic feet of the happy frog mix. And then we're gonna use half the bag or roughly 10%, 0 0.8 cubic feet of the micro bark. And then grab that berry tone jock, toss it over here. We're gonna put some berry tone in because why not? It's exactly what these blueberries are gonna need. We're just mixing it in the birdies eight and one because it's the only basin we have to mix. But after that, we're gonna pot them up in these beautiful terracottas. 
and I'll show you where we put them. So we got our four blueberries here. I've got peach sorbet, I have emerald, jewel, and I believe the last one is sharp blue. I was looking for an Avon blue, couldn't find it. Seems like peach sorbet is gonna be a viable alternative. All of these are low chill hour southern high bush varieties, which is pretty much the only blueberry you can get away with down here in Southern California. So now we are going to redo some blueberries here at the new homestead with the mixed soil. And they're going right next to Dragon Fruit Alley, which I think is gonna give them sort of a, maybe 11 a.m. starting sun exposure, which protects them at least a little bit. Might be nice to have them get some afternoon shade. So I may end up pushing them closer up this way because the shadow hits a little later in the day. We'll see, that's the beauty of growing them in containers, especially here in SoCal, is you can move them for growing conditions and you can customize your soil like you just saw us do, so. In with the soil mix. I'll tell you, no real need for a snow shovel for snow, but for moving a lot of material, it's really good. In with the emerald, no, this is sharp blue. Nearly evergreen in mild winter climates. That's what we want. All right. No real problem here with the roots. The roots haven't even made it to the side, so there's really no need to break it up, I don't think. Ace the test fit, yep. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. All right, in with a little more. Uh, that's tagged, so I don't need to label it. On we go. Necessary, but probably recommend it is to just add some kind of mulch. We have the micro bark already. We know blueberries like it, so we're just gonna top off with some micro bark mulch here. All right, we're gonna water them in, and we've got our blueberries ready to go. I'm really excited about them because these should be three plus year plants in this pot. And again, not not optimal in our area to grow them in ground. So we'll see how it goes. The blueberries are done. They're looking amazing, let me show you. Ooh, that's looking nice. Probably gonna have to even it out a little bit. But the dragon fruit has a little bit of cactus rust. So I have some copper fungicide here. I'm gonna show you the cactus rust first and then I'll show you how to spray it. So these little spots right here, it's these little sort of orangey spots. That is cactus rust and that will decimate slowly the dragon fruit. So again, copper fungicide will take care of it pretty quickly actually. So you just want to hit it with a spray and you're good to go. I'll show you. There's another area over here. There's a little bit of it here with some of these spots. So again, just hit it before it gets out of control because it will. So you want to make sure and scan every single side. We're good on this side, but it's not going to hurt to give it just a little bit and I'll come through and do the rest. I got to say it is coming together back here in the backyard. Oh, I forgot to show you this, guys. Take a look. I put the giant runner beans in the ground here. I'm using a Gardener Supply Company Vertex tomato cage, actually, but these, the genetics of these will grow a massive bean, like Jack and the Beanstalks style bean. Boom, up here. Very, very pleased with that. Yet another day of chunking away at some small tasks here on the property. Man, I'm really excited. Things are finally starting to come together a little bit. We've got all the raised beds. We've got all the rain barrels. Although I really don't know how sold I am on this, this barrel. It's a little bit, eh, it's a little flimsy. This entry point, look at this. I mean, this was just like completely off center drilled, pretty unprofessional in my opinion. Uh, and even with a downspout coming in, at least have it depressed a little bit so the water can can get in there. I mean, come on guys, it doesn't make sense. However, some other miscellaneous work that got done today in the artichoke patch, Bermuda, you can see it was beating on the gates. Some of it had made its way through. So what we did is just clear this out, ripped it all out. It's gonna come back, it's the nature of Bermuda, but at least something happened there. We've also started to clear out this bed right here. So in the back, I've taken out the two large Greek columnar basils right here. We actually cleared out this cabbage and kale. We had creeping aphids. I tried, tried, tried to get the aphids off of this. It did not work, and so I stopped it. It's like almost like a little quarantine wall right here. Killed them, moved them out, and then these I'm gonna harvest as quickly as I can before we replant it. But man, is it not looking good right now, guys? Is it not looking good? 
and it will look even better once it grows in. Lots of small progress done today. I'm up here on the roof. I like to come up on my own roof and take a look at the sunset. So we've got solar hanging out in the back. I will do a full update pretty soon on the solar. I have almost a month full of data. So that is coming. The short answer is it's been a great investment and I don't think I will have an energy bill at least at my current level of energy usage, but let's enjoy the sunset guys as we leave today's vlog.